what's going on tonight. Um, what I want to kind of show is what I think is the best way of doing um, hardwood floors. Um, this technique basically goes across like all softwares. Like I am just showing it in SketchUp because I feel like I haven't really uh, shown any cool stuff in SketchUp lately. Um, but uh, if you want um, to kind of have a head start with doing this, on the 3D Warehouse, I put something up called Hardwood Floor Starter Pack or just Hardwood Floor Starter. Um, and basically what I've done is I've um, just done some of the tedious work with this. Like just having this part right here will actually speed things up a lot because what I've gone and done is I've actually put in very small lines next to them so that um, you can just basically click it, duplicate it, and then move it. So you can uh, use like the um, times five array and things like that to speed um, to speed everything up. So um, basically, like I'll just walk through kind of how I make these planks first. It's really not a big deal. Um, I would just go with like I just kind of click somewhere. I type in four um, for four inches. Or wait, actually, let me make sure I did that right. So four. So yeah, four inches, and then I go like. I don't know, like 36 or something, 36 inches. And that looks like a reasonable size plank and that you can make them whatever size you want. Um, but then I'd like basically bring it up. So it's something like this. Um, and then I would go and I'd grab both the sides and then using the free add on uh, round corner, I think it is, um, I'm going to bevel them and I want to bevel them with one uh, 32nd of an inch. And then what you're left with is this. So it just gives it like a little bit of that um, kind of like the edge of the hardwood floor, um, the look. And then I make that into a component. So if I wanted to come in here and click any of these, I can just adjust them as needed. Um, and then, yeah, so that's that's a really easy part. Um, I will just make a quick like room as an example, um, just so that we can put the hardwood floor in it. So maybe we'll go like this. Uh, five. bring this up to like eight feet. Um, now I have a Valley Architects uh, window package. Um, so if people don't really know what I did with this example, um, I do wanna make a video about Valley Architects in the future, but I'm not really going into it right now. I will give you this model um, if you kinda wanna follow along though. So um, there should be a link below the video with like the Lumion style. Um, I'll put a link to the 3D Warehouse download. Uh, and then I'll also, um, add in like this floor and that kind of stuff just because there's nothing in this that I can't really um I guess that I, I can't show you guys like it's all stuff I can share so I want to do that um just because I have the chance to do it um so I guess I can choose like this window it doesn't really matter I'll make this like six feet maybe no that's the height sorry I want the width to be six feet it doesn't have to be perfect so I'll just go click there and yeah that's kind of big but it doesn't really matter um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these here. I'm going to drag this into the corner of the room. And I want to make sure that I grab it by like the bottom corner, not the top corner, because I want it to sit on top of the floor, obviously. Right. And so as I mentioned, I've already gone through and added in all of these like little lines here. So if you go way in, you can see right here. Um, and those are like how big the gaps are going to be. So if you just drag the corner to that, it'll work. Um, I will just hit K here because I want to grab this right on this corner. So I'm going to go right here. I'm going to hit Control C. And sorry for the scrolling. Um, but uh, yeah, and then I'm just going to clip it like right on here. So there should be a little bit of a gap. And then I'm just going to scroll back out. Um, I'm not going to hit anything because I want to use the array. So I'll just hit K again. I'll go times like five and that's going to be way too much, but you can kind of see the point of like how fast it can do that. So try it times four times three. Yeah. So we'll do times four. There can be overhang here and you can just scale this back if you want, which we'll do. Um, I guess I'll just do right now. If you did want to do this, I normally just let it overhang because I don't care. Uh, this one we can actually delete, but this one I'll grab it and I'll just scale it in to this wall. Just make sure that you scale it, um, like it just scales along the axis that you need to shrink it on. Uh, because it's kind of nice about Lumion is that just the way that we're gonna be putting the, um, 
like the the wood texture onto it we're not going to be using the imported scale so it's not going to look weird um so you can kind of just keep these at whatever scale you want um then what i'm going to do is i'm going to just highlight all of this make sure i have that one grabbed i'll hit k go in the corner here and just going to zoom in here. You want to make sure that it's like sitting right on that. I think that that's, I think that that's close enough. No, I need to go even closer than that. Um, actually, yeah, I'm going to go even closer than that. So let me just double check to make sure that I have the right thing here. I'm actually going to cut this in half again. So this is kind of what you can do. Like this little line is here to help, um, just kind of with like the distance, but you can almost just like chop it in half. So now that little part, obviously you can't delete it, but you can sort of see how that's um, now like that. And then uh, we can just leave that there, but now I'm gonna grab everything again. Um, this part is like, it is a little bit weird just getting it set up, but once you basically get this last part that I'm doing here, that's all you have to do. Um, so I have that there. I'll grab this. Right, so that should be good there. All right, so I uh, scroll back up a little bit, and you don't want to hit really anything here because you still want the um, you still want to be able to hit the array button. So on my number pad, I'm gonna hit like times five, and as you can see, everything moves over, and I'll maybe do like times eight, times 11 yeah and so that covers it up if we hit k again then now you have um hardwood floor going out through, throughout the whole thing you can add more like kind of randomness to it because i only did the three um three rows of planks that have like different i guess variations um but if you um if you want to do like four or five you, you can do that you just need to make the first one a different size and all the other planks work um and then yeah this part is kind of the the most tedious part. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to wood and then you can use any um, wood texture that you want. I'd actually recommend that you um, use um, wood textures that are very different because if some of you remember back to the video I made about tiling, what we're gonna do now is we're not actually gonna go into the component because we don't want all of the wood to change. We want only the ones we click on. So we're basically just gonna do this. And that's what, this is what I was saying about it's a little bit, uh, this part is definitely tedious and sorry for like the clicking. Um, but this is kind of how I go about doing it. Um, just because you get, in my opinion, this is like the, the way that you're going to get the, the best looking uh, hardwood floor in uh, Lumion. And, you know, it doesn't have to be like absolutely perfect. What I could have done is just made like a bunch of rows with um, and put uh, the colors on first, but I want it to be as random as possible. So I'll just go like, uh, you just don't want to put them next to each other because I find that that kind of uh, gives like the wrong effect. Um, but that's really, um, this is really all you have to do. So if you guys want to skip ahead a little bit, I'll put a timestamp um, in the video. Um, but what we're going to do is I'm just going to go through and click all of these on best I can. I just don't want the same color touching. And um, I do recommend that you, as I said, use different textures because the first time I went through this, I actually just like kept using the same one and adding a, like a slightly different color to it. But it wasn't always exactly obvious if I was putting them uh, next to each other. And then I noticed in my final render that there are some that are kind of like touching each other. Um, and it just looks like it, it just doesn't really look realistic in the sense that like you wouldn't have wood planks uh, kind of doing that. Um, so yeah, we'll just keep motoring away at this. Maybe there's a faster way of doing this, but like I've, I've found that like this doesn't take too, too long for the, like, I guess the quality that you're going to get in Lumion. Um, and this, this stuff kind of comes back to what I was saying, um, a couple videos ago about how in Lumion, like if you can actually model, um, things like wood planks, bricks, siding, anything like that, it's always going to look better, um, in my opinion than using a texture. Just on the way, just because that's how Lumion kind of works with like, um, it has a much easier time calculating shadows and things like that, as I think that most softwares would, if there's actual geometry there. Um, and I find that it actually speeds up your viewport a lot in Lumion. Um, 
like the, I just find the textures can really like start to like weigh it down after a while. Um, and I have seen some people make videos about hardwood floor um, before where they use the actual textures. And there are ways that you can get some pretty sharp ones in Lumion. But as I said, like I just find that it's it, you just have way more control over it when you do it this way, because um, in Lumion, the Omni shadow and things like that can be used when you do this style of hardwood floor. So you can actually get like more shadows in the creases and things like that which is why I, I didn't actually put them together. Um, I wanted them to have a gap in them because then you can actually control the shadows going up and down. But the gap is basically as small as this style of SketchUp can go. And so it doesn't um, really affect anything. And I'm almost finished here. Luckily, once, once you actually get this into Lumion, this part, um, is really not that bad because uh, you can copy and paste the material so you only have to make it once um, and this is so I need one more texture I think um, yeah one more texture I uh, just for time's sake, I'll just do this because these don't have to be perfect. Um, and if you see any easy ones, like, so I put these ones right on top of each other. So if you can go like, uh, maybe, oh, maybe not actually. Okay, so that's good enough. Um, so I have Lumion open. So I'm going to save this and I'm going to bring that in. Uh, one thing I am going to do though is I'm just going to make I'm gonna make this all a group. I'm just gonna put a roof on this. Oops. Then let me just find where I saved the hardwood texture. So um, for this one, you actually will have to use a uh, bump map. Um, and the texture that I used, um, I didn't have to do anything with like surface imperfections because we're gonna be making a gloss mask in Photoshop quickly. Um, but what I did use is I used the uh, wood 78 texture from iMesh um, that we used uh, in the like, last couple tutorials. Um, so it worked really well for this. So I just decided to stick with it. And yeah, notice that there is no planks in this. So no matter where I put the texture, no matter what I do with it, it's never going, it's always seamless. <clears throat> so if you try and do this with like planks of wood, you're actually going to have to adjust every single individual plank to make sure that the, it's not on one of the lines because it just destroys the effect. So if you are if you are using this technique, you always want just a seamless wood texture that doesn't have any like divots or anything in it. Um, so make sure that Lumion's open here. So I'll go to create new. Now for this one, um, I think I used the forest environment. It really doesn't matter. Like I just wanted to have like some trees in the background, I guess, like just to see if that would kind of help the reflection planes a little bit. Um, right, so this is open and I'll just zip up ahead here. I will live link this in and then we can just kind of see that this is what we have. So for now, I'll just take this uh, glazing and I'll just put some, um, I'll just put some glass on it. So we'll go into Photoshop here and then I'm going to get the wood uh, texture. So I don't need the color map, but I do need the normal map and the roughness. Okay, so there is something important about this. I've mentioned this in a couple of tutorials. You can't bring this particular thing into Lumion. Um, the reason is, is because this is a roughness map, not a gloss map. So if we brought this in, everything would basically be the, like the reverse of what we wanted. The areas that are not supposed to be glossy would be way more glossy. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit control I, and now it's a glossiness map. That roughness is just the inverse of gloss and vice versa. Um, but as you can see, if we go to channels here, um, this says gray, so we need our red, blue, and green, or it's not going to let us make a targa. So we're going to go up while we have this one selected, uh, or this tab, we're going to go to image mode, RGB color, click that on. And now, as you can see, we have all the channels. So I'm going to hit, uh, uh, control a, and then control C. I'm going to go into the normal map here. I'm going to add a channel down in the bottom here, uh, for the alpha. And then as you can see. Um, this is like an empty alpha map, but if we now 
click, make sure that this channel is uh, selected and we hit control V. Now this is what we have. So this is kind of like, this is a gloss mask, but it's more or less like a super normal map. Um, it's basically it, like Lumion does do this very well with the gloss mask. Um, it'll make it so not only do you have your normal map, but it also make it so that certain areas of your normal map will have um, more or less like reflectivity. Um, and you don't get this kind of detail if you don't make a mask. Um, I really wish that they let it, um, that you could just add the gloss right into Lumion, but you can't, unfortunately. Um, so what we need to do now, though, is we need to save this as a... Oh, no, I need to export this, sorry. Um, so export, uh, export as... No, wait, I messed this up again, sorry. Wait, so save as... Right, so I had a little hiccup there, so I just wanted to cut to a different film. I figured it out. So inside of this, um, if you have this normal map, you have to go up to the image mode and then turn this on to 8 bits a channel. Um, I'm not sure why it was set to 16. I guess that that's what the uh, the iMesh ones are set to. I've never, uh, I guess I didn't run into that problem last time. I'm not sure why, but um, now if we go up to file, save as, then you should see we'll have all this stuff here. So we'll go down to Targa. Um, I'll just save it in this folder. I'll call it gloss and I'm going to make sure that 32 bits of pixel are selected uh, we will uh, minimize this and then we'll go in here and what I'm actually going to do is I'm just going to drag this up a little bit uh, because I don't want it uh, the grass to be poking through obviously um, but okay so I think what I did when I rendered the video is I just put like a little dresser in so I think if I just type in like storage um, I think it was just like this yeah so uh, something like that yeah, I mean you can scale it down it doesn't really matter um, so what I'm going to do now is I need to turn all of these into uh, Lumion materials so just to speed things up alright so we will take this one and I will go to where I saved this um and then so the first one's base color we will just give this a second yeah this always takes longer than i feel like it should but not much you can really do about that No, oh, select the target here. Um, and then don't want the map scale imported. We're just going to make it like change the heading on this so that just find it till it's like a, a decent tile size so that the wood doesn't look too small, but it's just like realistic. Um, and then I'm going to go to uh, actually, I think that that's maybe turn the reflectivity down a little bit, but um, having it at about like 0.9 and 0.9, like somewhere in there is good. You can turn the relief up if you want, but I just kept it at one. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to copy this. We're going to paste it on here, but then what we're going to do is we're actually going to go to the position and we're going to like Z offset it, Y offset it and like move these around. Um, because this is why we made all these different textures here is because now we can make the planks almost look random. Um, we're going to be spinning them around that kind of thing. So yeah, paste the material X offset, Z offset. And you just want to make it so, like I said, it's like kind of random. Uh, and then this one, maybe we'll turn it to like 270. So it's going the opposite way. Paste the material. Um, okay, actually, you don't want to change the pitch. So just uh, keep this one at 270, but I meant to change the Z offset for this one, or the, the X and Y. Something like that. Paste that in. And then, yeah, this, this is really all I do. Like, I just go and kind of mess around with this so that it's always facing, um, it's facing the right way or facing different ways rather. Um, and then, yeah, you can do this with as many different planks as you want. Um, but just keep in mind, you have to kind of offset them a little bit or it won't, uh, it just won't look realistic. So yeah, it's, it's annoying, but it's worth it in the long run. And it's, that's kind of why I want to set up this, um, the thing that you can just download from the 3d warehouse, because I, like if you did want to do these for your, um, apartments, then 
uh, I just want to make a way that it's like, I guess like fast for everyone to just kind of like zip through them. Um, and then, yeah, so what you're kind of left with is this. So if we go into rendered mode, then that's already looking pretty good. Um, but I think that we can make it even better by going real skies, go to overcast. I think we chose like, I chose this one last time. I'm going to turn this all the way up. Um, because I find this gives you like a nice, um, kind of light. And then I'm going to go to color correction. I'm going to turn this down to like zero because um, I don't want that on there. Now, this is kind of what I want to show you now is kind of what I was talking about with the um, um, with the shadows. So if you go all the way up here, as you can see, Omni Shadow is making like these really, really dark um, lines in the planks. And if that's what you want, that's good. But watch what happens when you turn it down. As you can see, they're much they're much softer and you can even turn up the brightness and then you can see that like they're, they're kind of going away. So this just gives you like tons of control over how just everything is going to look on your um, on your scene. And you can really see from this angle too, like how well the uh, how well the gloss map um, or the gloss mask story really like adds those surface imperfections. Cause I think that someone actually mentioned on the video, like the, uh, the surface imperfections look great. And there isn't really anything, um, like we didn't do anything extra to this besides just using the, the gloss and the normal map. Um, but yeah, so if you want uh, the boards to look like they're really close together, you turn Omni Shadow down. But if you want to look, make it look like they have kind of like a big gap in between them and you turn it up. So I think I had it at like 0.3 because I wanted it to actually a little bit lower than that. Yeah, like 0.2, some, maybe even a little bit lower, um, something like that. Yeah, so this looks like there is definitely like a gap there, but it looks like they're pushed together, which is kind of the effect I wanted. Um, and then I think I turned up skylight. So I think I turned on this stuff. Um, this did increase my render time a bit, so this isn't really necessary, but just for going for like a look that like, um, to make it like as nice as possible, I did do this. So um, right there. And yeah, if you put that on, so you kind of get this effect too. Um, that is a little bit strong, I think. So maybe I will change this one. I think I had like, I think that's the one that I used. Um, and then, yeah, so I did make these really glossy in here. So you kind of get the effect, but you don't have to do it like that. Um, it's kind of overkill. And yeah, hyperlight, I don't think I really touched. I definitely turned up sharp in a little bit. And like I said, you have, um, you'll have the original one that you can download from me so you can see what I did. Um, one thing I will mention though, is that I had to turn motion blur on for some reason because I kept getting motion blur even though it wasn't enabled. So what I did is I just brought the effect in and then set it to zero and it fixed it. So if anyone kind of runs into that problem, um, yeah, I guess that's how I, that's how I fixed it, but it was a little bit weird. Um, and then, yeah, so what I would probably just do to finish this off is I'd go into movie mode. Um, I think I set it so it was like here because I wanted the hardwood floor to be the the focus. So I kind of zoomed it in. So it's like, I think I started where it's like this. So you could see like the edge of the cabinet. And then I kind of wanted to keep it at mostly the same level. So I just hit D. Um, I kind of messed that up there, but I think I put it like here to end or something like that. Um, and, uh, so it's 0.78 and you want to keep it at like the same height. It's okay if the camera moves around a little bit, but if I turn this up now, it was like 19 seconds. Oh, and then put the ease in linear. Yeah. And so this is kind of what I was talking about for some reason. I don't know if I'm, if it's like this scene has motion blur in it or something. Okay. So that's actually what it was. This scene has motion blur for some reason. Okay, so turn that off and then you're good to go. So that's kind of like what we wanted, but we're going to copy this effect over. Um, okay, so I didn't save the camera, but that's fine. So I'll copy the effects, go to movie, paste effects. Yeah, and then I think that that's more or less like what I, what I did for the video. Um, you can mess around with uh, the gloss and everything like that to get the exact effect that you want. Um, but that is, yeah, that's really how I think hardwood floors should be done in Lumion. Um, you can do this with any 3D software, really. Like, this is how I do my floors in Blender as well. It just looks better. Um, I think 3ds Max actually has something called, like, Plank Generator or Floor Generator or something like that. Um, and you can actually get plugins, like, from Polygon that just does, like, every single plank would be um, individually done, which 
is pretty awesome. Um, I wish that there was something like that in uh, Lumion. But yeah, just get a, uh, you get a seamless wood texture with no, like, you can't actually see the lines of the planks in it. And then you can easily make something like this. And what's what's nice is that you don't have to make it the focal point. Like you can really put this in any scene. And once you get the planks done once, you can just copy and paste them. Um, I mean, once you actually separate all the materials out like that, you can just kind of copy and paste like the whole room into other rooms. Like, you know, add a couple like planks on the end, cut some off, and then it should fit any room. So yeah, um, hopefully everyone found that interesting. Um, if you did uh, find this helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you could uh, subscribe to the channel so you can uh, stay in the loop for more tutorials I have coming. Um, one that I'm hoping to make this week is a SketchUp to Blender workflow, um, just because I have been kind of pushing, you know, everyone to sort of learn Blender. Um, so learning SketchUp to Blender, um, the add-on really helps out a lot. Um, if you are subscribed to my channel already, thank you very much for checking out this video, and I will see you in the next one. Have a good night.